Donald Trump has left New York behind for Florida, or at least he had. Trump has returned to his golf course in New Jersey for the summer, where he's hosting a fundraiser this weekend. The cost of doing business with Trump, quarter million dollars per person, really. But New Jersey may not be safe for Trump much longer because next door, two of the top prosecutors in New York now teaming up, working together on criminal cases against the ex-president. For more than a year, former President Trump and his namesake family business, they've been under parallel fraud investigations from New York Attorney General and the Manhattan District Attorney. Now, the two are joining forces. The state attorney general's office said, quote, we have informed the Trump organization that our investigation into the organization is no longer purely civil in nature. We are now actively investigating the Trump organization in a criminal capacity along with the Manhattan DA. The Trump organization declined to comment, but the former president, he's dismissed the investigation being run by both offices, which are run by Democrats, as politically motivated. This is just a continuation of the witch hunt. It's Democrat stuff. A source telling ABC News the prosecutors have been presenting evidence to a grand jury. They've also been poring over the former president's tax returns, which took two years and two Supreme Court arguments to access. A focus is whether the Trump Organization valued its properties one way to obtain favorable terms from lenders and another way to lower its taxes. Court filings have shown that the investigation has covered a number of Trump properties, including the Seven Springs estate north of New York City, a skyscraper on Wall Street, and the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago. There's no telling when criminal charges could be filed, but Manhattan DA Cy Vance is not seeking re-election and leaving office at the end of the year. And for more, let's turn to Tom Luzio. Tom knows the New York system well, having spent more than two decades county level prosecutor, the same space occupied by the district attorney Cy Vance in Manhattan. And Tom, did you see the evolution from the civil to now criminal phase of this um, inevitable or is it telling? <laughs> I would say it's both, Richard. Uh, I worked at the AG's office at the end of my career as well, and there were uh, many times when a case began in the civil section and criminality was discovered. Share it with your colleagues, discuss it with other agencies, share the resources, don't duplicate the efforts, and, and follow the leads. Prosecute when, when you have the case. Simple as that. The fact that the AG's office is now working uh, with the Manhattan DA's office, um, you can argue um, a lot more efficient and practical so they don't cross wires. But what does it also tell you from an inside baseball standpoint, uh, especially given the fact that Vance ain't running for re-election, he's gone at the end of the year, in terms of timetable and where they are at this stage of the probe? Okay, so initially timetable, you got, I'd have to be very careful with because these cases are are going to be voluminous in the examination. So I know the, the attorney general's been at it for a while on the civil side, and Cy Vance has been at it for a long time. But remember, the subpoenas were just obtained uh, with the tax records. In, in the economic crimes world not so long ago. So you've still got a, a long haul ahead of you. Uh, the attorney general has certain areas that she can uh, investigate that Cy does not have uh, jurisdiction for. There are other certain areas in terms of uh, conspiracy where you eliminate the jurisdictional issue. That's an advantage. Uh, but the, the, the final thing I'll add here is if they're looking at various conspiracies, racketeering, offenses like that, I'm, I'm surmising that she wouldn't have come out with this announcement if, if they didn't uh, already have perhaps people lined up willing to cooperate. And cooperation is something that you're not going to see in civil cases. People can pay the fine, but doing state time... You know, my experience, 31 years, people people have a lot to lose and don't want to lose it in that way and come to the table. Of course, she has to corroborate whatever they say, but, you know, that's, that's, that's still a yeoman's task. We'll see if they're up to it. You know, Tom, 
I've spoken to folks closest. The name everybody keeps saying is Weisselberg. Um, and they're leaning on the kid, the ex-wife. Um, it always starts with an ex-wife, doesn't it, Tom? But anyway, she, uh, uh, not too crazy, nothing. yeah, not too crazy about the ex uh, laying out uh, some of the financial arrangements that as an employee of the Trump Organization, how he was paid, the perks that maybe weren't declared, um, and all the rest. They're obviously going after um, Papa Weisselberg here, who, according to at least uh, his former sister-in-law, said knows every bad thing Donald Trump has ever done. In fact, it goes all the way back to Fred Trump. To that end, how worried should Trump be if Weisselberg becomes a cooperating witness? Well, falsifying business records is an e felony, and if if that's the avenue you're going at it, that's four years max, and there wouldn't be just one. There would be multiple. So you're you're looking at a significant amount of jail time. Then false, falsifying business records in the first degree, you have to prove that uh, you're committing the crime of falsifying business records, but your intent includes committing another crime. And that and that's where all of this, I, I think, is leading. And that's why I mentioned racketeering, conspiracy, uh, and, and the crimes that they may have committed along those lines. So anything that he could say, will, I believe, would buttress any number of overt acts and furtherance of a conspiracy that's been committed by members of the Trump Organization. Tom, you know, for some um, that have been looking uh, at Trump finally uh, facing some justice of some kind, listen, a conviction is a conviction, and even if it's uh, to at least a lay person, something of arcane tax law, does it have to be in this particular case, given that you both got the AG, you got the DA going after it, um, more than just a transactional misstep, does it have to be really clear to the audience why um, this was not only wrong, this was intentional, this was real fraud, this was systemic fraud. Does it have to be, given that we're talking about a former president at this point, more than, yeah, you know, he tried to get cued here on his taxes. They've got to really be clear and nail him more than just some run-of-the-mill, you know, white-collar guy on Wall Street. Yeah, I think they've set, I think they've set the bar pretty high for themselves. Uh, you know, obviously Trump responded that, you know, she's been after me since she was running for election. I, I get that. But that doesn't mean it's not mutually exclusive. You know, I, I worked for seven DAs and three attorneys general. And, uh, you know, we, in that entire time, there was at least one occasion where a political opponent was involved. And we ultimately found nothing. Another agency did and prosecuted that individual, but we didn't find anything. And you know what we did? We shut down the case. We informed the boss that we didn't have that crime. And that's because prosecutors are have a little different standard than the average defense attorney. Our, our, our job is to do justice. So you, you can, in my mind, you can rule out political motivation because when it's down at the bottom, and there are guys like me and men and women like me working on this, you know, we, we have an obligation, and it's our career, and it's our ethical obligation. And if we find things within this examination, let's say I was conducting it, and I found in things in that examination that actually exculpated, exonerated, helped Donald Trump, I'd have to turn those over. That's my responsibility. So I, I don't think it's politically motivated. I think they've set the bar, bar quite high uh, because they understand what America is going to, what part of America is going to look at when and if they bring these prosecutions, if they bring these charges. Well, it sounds, if I read between the lines, Tom, that you think uh, Donald Trump has a reason to worry. We didn't even get into Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Cohen believes it's when, not if. He flips here, but we shall see. Tom Lucio, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Never a problem, Mitch. Thank you very much. Take Me care. Too. All right, when we come back, everybody, let's stay in New York and politics in the Empire State. It's not for the weak of heart or stomach. Governor Cuomo, he's been a master of the game, but now a trio of Republicans, they're gunning for him, if he's even the nominee at the same time next year. While in the city, it is a gang of Democrats seeking to move on from this guy, an insider's view of both those races next.